Number 15 should be your favorite question because it deals with money. Let's take a look. It says that you want to put $1,000 into an account that will pay you an 8% interest rate. And then the account is continuously compounded. And this is one of the keywords that we have to pay attention to. The question is, in how many years would you be able to get a total of $3,000 in the account? So as I mentioned, continuously compounded, there's a formula to, to do these calculations, right? And there are actually two types of formulas that we have seen. And let me write them down both. Okay, so as usual, I'll drop down some notes before we do any uh, further calculation. If the question was saying the account was compounded um, n times a year, n time a year. For example, if the question said, if the question was saying that uh, the account was compounded uh, monthly, then the n will be twelve. If they are talking about daily, then that will be three hundred sixty-five for n because that's how many times that you compound in a year. If that's the situation. We will use the formula A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N, okay, and raised to the N T power. And N times T, they are both in the exponent. Okay, so let me explain what do, uh, what do these letters mean. A means the amount. The amount of money that you are going to have altogether, including how much that you have put in. P stands for the principal. And this is how much money that you're putting at first, right? Your original investment. And then the R, it's the interest rate. Annual interest rate. And you need to write this as a decimal number when you are dealing with, when you're doing with your calculation. Okay? And the N is how many times that you compound in a year. And the is number of times compounded in a year. And then um, T, it's how many years? Number of years. Number of years. Okay? And then there's another similar formula to this. And that's the, uh, that's the formula that we're going to use. When the question says, uh, the account is compounded continuously. Compound continuously. Continuously. Then in that situation, we will use A is equal to P times E raised to the R T's power. The P, the R, the T are the same from uh, this right here as well, from this equation as well. The E right here, I just need to make a note. E is the number about 2.718 and you can get that number on your calculator so if you take a look on your calculator so this is the calculator I recommend so if you, uh, if you take a look and right here as I can see that there's a uh, the E okay the E button the E is very similar to the pi so that's why they put it together it's very useful number and you will use that a lot um, in logarithms or in uh, like compounding or in chemistry okay so um, to get E on my calculator, I have to hit the alpha and then hit uh, hit this button. And then that's how I get the E. And if I hit equal, as you can see, this is 2.71828 and so on. It's irrational. It's very similar to the number pi, but they are different, two different things. They are both very famous number. Okay, so that's why they are similar. Okay. And in this, in this question, we must use a calculator to do it. Without a calculator, there's no way to uh, figure the correct answer. And this is the formula we're going to use. Okay, this is the formula that we're going to use. Uh, I will box this. Because we're dealing with compounded continuously. Okay. Okay, so it says, let's read this again. So it says that you have $1,000 at first. Right? So that's how much money that you have at first. So let me write this down. A thousand dollar, that will be the P. That will be the principal. P is equal to one thousand. Okay. And then he says that the interest rate, eight percent interest, and that's the R. So R is equal to eight percent. But as I mentioned earlier, 
You don't want to use a percentage when you are dealing with when you are doing your calculation. You want to change this to a decimal. So I will take this this number uh, this whole number eight, right? So I technically have eight and a decimal point right here, and I will move the decimal twice to the left. One, two. So you can add a zero and then put a decimal point right there. The R I'm actually going to look at this as zero point zero eight. Then let's see what else do we know. Compounded continuously, that tells us that we are going to use this formula, and then it says in how many years would your account have uh, $3,000? And that's how much money that you will have altogether um, in, your, in your account. So that's the amount. That's the A. So we also know that A is equal to 3000 okay. okay, so we pretty much just took all the informations, all the important information from the uh, from the equation, and then we must use this formula, okay? And then we can just set this up. I will just write this. You uh, use a is equal to p times e raised to the r t power. So now we know a is three thousand. So let me plug that in three thousand for a, and that's equal to p is equal to one thousand. 1,000 times E. E is just the E, and you are going to use the uh, the E button on the calculator to do the calculations. The R is 0 0.08. 0 0.08. And the T is the uh, variable that we don't know. So let me write that in red. This is the variable that we are trying to solve. The T, the number of years, and T is in the exponent. Okay, so let's see how to do this. So the idea is right, right here is that you want to first isolate this part, e to the 0 0.08 to the t, uh, times t power. You want to isolate this part. So to isolate that, as you see that we have 1,000 times this. So I need to first divide both sides by 1,000. Divide both sides by 1,000. So this cancels. And 3,000 divided by 1,000, you can just cancel all the zeros. So you have 3, it's equal to e to the 0 0.08t. And again, t is the variable that we're trying to solve. We're trying to isolate t. Next, when you see that the variable is in the exponent, you want to do the logarithms. You want to use logarithms to solve it. Um, I will make some note right here. Uh, yeah, right here in black. So when you see, so these are the three steps uh, to solve logarithm to solve uh, exponential equations with logarithms. If you see the situation is b to some exponent is equal to another number y. If this is what you have, okay. If you want to solve for x, then you do. Uh, you want to put log base b on both sides. So b to the x, that's equal to I have y. I want to put log base b for the y as well. You want to take log base b on both sides. That's how you will say it. Okay? So you do this. You put like, you can just first write down log base b, log base b on both sides. And after you do that, the log base b and this b will cancel. So you will get just an x by itself. Okay, when you see um, exponent exponential equations, you are going to use logarithms, logs, and exponent. They cancel, so you just have the regular x. The regular x is equal to log base b. Log base b of whichever number that we have right here, y. Okay, so this uh, this is the three steps to solve our. Uh, exponential equations and that's what we are going to use right here okay so in this case I have e to the power right here and e is the base I'm going to take log base e on both sides okay so it cancels right it cancels log base e and then e cancels and we will get 0 0.08 times t and that's equal to log base e of 3. And let me make another note right here. 
Because E is such a special number, and on the calculator, actually, there's a uh, button special designed for log base E. Log base E, it's the same as LN on the calculator. So this right here, it's the same as saying LN3. So we can just punch in LN3 on the calculator and then do the calculations right there. Then to solve for t, we can just divide both sides by 0 0.08. 0 0.08. So these two cancels. And I get uh, the variable t. It's equal to log, sorry, ln3 over 0 0.08. So let me use my calculator and see um, what do we get right here. So I have my LN button, and that's actually this is a fraction. So to make you guys jealous, I have a fraction key right here. So let me use the fraction key. And then LN, and I have the three parentheses, and I have to go down. And I need 0, 0 0.08 equals to 13.7. Okay, 13.73, 13.73. So technically, I should have used like a little wave so for approximation. That's 13.73. And let me take a look of what the directions want us to do. It says that round your answer to the nearest year. So we want to get the nearest whole number. That's all. So t is about equal to 13.7. So the answer is... You can just say it's about a whole number 14 years. 14 years. Okay, because you need to round this up. So uh, just say this is 14. Uh, round up. I'll just say round up. Round up. And by the way, just to make you guys, uh, just to like kind of introduce this calculator a little bit more. Anyways, this is the answer. And as I said, I just want to um, introduce this calculator a little, a little bit more. Um, as I pointed out, on the calculator, usually you only see the log and the ln. And I usually, I usually refer the regular log on the calculator as the calculator log. And this log means log base 10. And this ln key, it's log base e. Okay, so maybe I'll also write that down. Uh, right here. Um, calculator, calculators. The regular log means log base 10. And then ln means log base e. Okay. But on this calculator, you actually has a key right here that will allow you to enter any base that you want. So if you, if you hit that, so let's say if I don't know the ln is equal to log base e, let's say I didn't know that. Let's say I didn't know that. I can actually enter log and then base e. Oops, I want e not pi, so I need to hit the alpha because my e button is in red. Okay, so let me show you guys again. I need to hit the alpha and then hit the e. So log base e, and then you can just move the uh, that thing right here in the middle. Then I can just plus 3, and that's log base e, right? And then I need to divide by 0 0.08. You can just divide by, or you can have used the fraction key, divide by 0 0.08, and we get the same answer. And this key is very convenient because sometimes that when you have to deal with log base 2 or log base 7, um, you can just use this button right here instead of using a change of base formula. Anyways, that's it for this question. This is it for the question. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. And then I think, I think later on I will do more videos on how to use this calculator. Alright.